you that when we started the school, Mrs. D and I thought, probably be good if we could start a farm. Because then on a farm, you'd have to get up in the morning, feed the chickens, um, milk the cows, all before you went to school. It'd be hard work. Whether you liked it, you didn't like it, you just had to do it. But it was so gratifying to do the job well. Well, we couldn't start a farm. The city of Cleveland wouldn't let us, so we started a school. So this morning, or this afternoon, I have three farmers with me who work on, they work on the Birchwood Farm, which means they do lots of hard work, but they're also pretty proud of themselves because of the things that they've accomplished. So Joshua, Farmer Joshua, maybe I should call him that, <laughs> he's going to tell us a little bit about History Day. The hard work that it was, but also the gratification. Okay, Farmer Joshua, what do you have to say? Hi, so History Day is probably one of the most difficult competitions I've done here at Birchwood. Um, everything from researching to note taking to source finding, it's definitely um, a hard challenge, but just getting through that work and staying consistent with it, seeing the end results is always worth it and satisfying. And you know, when you work hard like that and you're satisfied, then you turn out like a great farmer like Joshua. But at Birchwood, we also got female farmers. <laughs> They're just as strong. So Lena's has volunteered to talk about her experience on the science fair farm. Yeah, science yeah. fair is like a process that starts in like the end of September near October, and then it stretches all the way until January. And the process begins like you have to choose like some type of um, question that you have and then you go through like the research process and then eventually writing your review of the literature and then you have to decide about your materials and then like actually carry out the process the experiment and from that you can like get a conclusion and then analyze that and then again you have to make your board at the end and um, seeing your board at the end, like you get to see all the work that you've done. So Farmer Lean and Farmer Joshua, they just give a simple explanation, but what they're talking about takes hours and days and even months, am I right? Every step, so it's a tremendous amount of work to do something really well. Now, we've also got a female farmer, another young lady farmer, Sanvi, is going to tell us a little bit about her writing experience on the writing part of the Birchwood Farm. Yeah, um, there's like a lot of opportunities given here and one of them is Power of the Pen, which is a long writing process where you attend um, weekly like classes with the LA teachers and they give you prompts and you write the story and it's just like how it is at the competitions, but um, the teachers return the work to you and they give you feedback. And it's really helpful because you can learn from that um, and you can carry that knowledge to the competitions. Mm -hmm. And the competitions are always really fun and it's a really like educational experience. And it's a lot of hard work because it's like three consecutive rounds and mm -hmm. you don't really have a break. But even if you don't place, um, it's like, it, it feels really good at the end because you know that you worked really hard throughout those rounds. And if you do place, it's just, it's a great feeling. Yeah. So in, in any case, even whether you win or lose, but of course these guys are all winners in the competition so far. The gratification of working hard and then being successful, well, it turns out farmers like this. These are the kind of farmers we're proud of at Birchwood. They're outs not just outstanding in science and in history day and in writing, but just about everything they do because they've learned how to be strong and taking on the responsibilities and working hard. So I wanted to include these few students that you can see as our, our members of our Birchwood Farm, but there's many more. Um, we selected a few to talk to you, but I think you'd hear it over and over again. Uh, they learned responsibility to not only take on things, but to do their best and to work hard, whether it takes hours away from other recreations or other things they'd like to do, because the gratification of a job well done really is much greater than all of the other types of entertainment or pleasures they might find. 
That's not to say they don't need lots of fun, lots of playtime. I agree with that too. But I think in this day and age, it's, hard, it's getting harder and harder to realize that's a part of what human beings love. They love to accomplish something through hard work and then enjoy the pride that comes with it. So we're not afraid at Birchard to push children, uh, to cajole them, to encourage them, to inspire them, to reach as high as they possibly can. Now, that doesn't mean it's a, a negative atmosphere at all because simultaneously, we support them. It's sort of a back and forth, but you can do more. Let me help you. You can accomplish this. Let me help you. It's this back and forth between continually to raise the bar of achievement and accomplishments. I mean, that's, that's why you look at the record of what we've done, this tiny little school competing with schools 10 times our size. How? Because these kids just have learned how to take responsibility, how to work, they're not afraid to work and their work excels. So even though we demand a lot, we expect a lot, when they cross that line of a success and they got their goal, um, they're, they're just exuberant. I, I love teaching math. I love teaching problem solving because I have the children do difficult problems and they're struggling. I don't get this and they'll complain this is too hard and I'll give them a little hint and within a minute or two, I just hear the yell, I got it, I got it. <laughs> to see that kind of joy in, because of the hard work, because of the achievement. That's just in math, but you see this over and over again in our signature programs. That's why we do them. It builds up something that I think is lacking in today's society, where there's so much emphasis on how do you feel well, you, that almost becomes an unending trail of trying to figure out how to feel better as opposed to how about you take on your responsibilities, do the very best you can, see how you feel after that. The satisfaction far outweighs any accommodations that are made to make you feel good. So your, your sons and daughters sent to the school, uh, inspire them along with us to do the best that they can to reach their very highest levels of achievement based on their ability and their agency. Thank you.